So you can do anything with hydrogen you can do with you can do with fossil fuel. And this is all, you know, this is all rock hard technology. This the space shuttle has used fuel cells every manned mission since Apollo for the last, you know, fifty years. Solar panels have been around since. It makes you wonder why we're not using them. It doesn't make any sense. Well, it's pretty easy to see why. Like you were saying, yeah. You know, the last eight years of Bush. Yeah. You know, you, they they did, the oil companies didn't need a lobbyist. No. He was in the White House. Yeah. You know, so what do you what do, do with say, the waste? What do you say to people that maybe have concerns over or hydrogen being unsafe? As far as well, every ma first of all, as far as hydrogen safety goes, when you're using it at low pressure or compressed like that, the energy density is not good. Okay. All right, if you have a leak with a propane, it sits at the bottom and waits for an ignition source, then all of the energy goes up all at once. Hydrogen, since it's lighter than air, this tank weighs as much as an empty tank. No way, can I pick it up? Pick it up. That's full. Wow, this is full. Yeah, full. Hydrogen weighs no more full than empty. who are putting out fuel cells like the bloom box and things like that are running it off of natural gas or form natural gas to hydrogen that's what's called brown hydrogen okay all right which means they could get the funding from the gas companies to build those fuel cells because they were turning it they were they were trying to make a dirty fuel look clean right when all they were doing was disguising the fuel under a different label okay unless it's made like this it's not green i got you think about who the largest investors in yeah. GE. Shell hydrogen. Shell hydrogen. BP hydrogen. They're, they're it's the oil companies. They're, they're making their solar, dirty fuel look clean. They're investing constantly in new technologies because they know as it slowly gets replaced, they want to be in place to be in control of it. Right. That's really but this is too far ahead of them because this doesn't use any fossil fuel. You know, you can buy an oil well, you can buy a coal mine. You can't buy a piece of sun. Yet. <laughs> doesn't change goes the way of the dinosaurs are yeah. going to be extinct and we have to change in this country it's hard to change you know if you can't teach an old dog new tricks well if we don't the, the species is not going to survive right. you know well, we're talking about a huge infrastructure I mean this is almost a bigger you you're know, not development effort than, than that no that's what they're telling you you're listening to the same propaganda be, yeah all right <laughs> look I'm gonna tell you we already have the infrastructure for this yeah. There's 1.5 million miles today that can be used for hydrogen, gas lines. Okay. And they can just be converted over just like that. For There's no converting. You've got to change some of the valves and the That's fittings it. for the properties of hydrogen, but the pipeline doesn't change. I didn't know that. I didn't know it was that easy. That's how, that's how Most easy Most people, it is. I don't think, know nope. it's that easy. 1.5 million miles of pipeline in the U.S. that can be used for hydrogen. The most dangerous people on the planet are the people who have nothing to lose. There you go. Yeah. They're the people who are going to make the, the biggest noise. And what I see happening in the U.S. is that group is growing here. When you can't afford the goods and services that you produce, and you can't afford your mortgage, and you can't afford to feed your family, and you can't afford, uh, you know, your energy bills, and you're losing your home, it starts to become a dangerous segment of the population, and it's growing. And there's going to be revolution. There That's is. how you're going to get change. Think of how much solar that you could put. You could put. You know, a 100K system on every man, woman, and child for what we spent on wars in the last 10 years. Ridiculous. The trillions of dollars. You know? Yeah, we're still spending. Yeah, we're still spending. People think oil is the price you pay at the pump. Oil is not the price you pay at the pump. People forget the chain, the wheels to well, of how this thing happens. You know how much energy actually gets used out of gasoline or diesel fuel by the time it gets there? About three and a half times. You know, it's got to be trucked all the way yeah. from Saudi Arabia, pumped out of the ground, drilled. Then it has to be protected by a whole fleet of ships and getting here so it doesn't get hit by the Somali pirates. Mm -hmm. All right, then it's got to get to the refinery where it's got to be refined, and then it's got to be distributed, then it's got to be trucked, wholesaler, the retailer, and it's got to be taxed 19 times before it gets to you. It's insane. The whole system is insane. <laughs> Why do you think petroleum is unregulated? It's the only utility that you have to have that's a necessity. It's unregulated. When Reagan came in office, that's what he did. He deregulated oil. Yeah. After the last oil crisis, he said, oh, I'll let the market control the price. That, that, you see how that worked, didn't it? In 2000, 
to hold the world record for a hydrogen car by about three times. So this is the fuel cell built the vehicle you built in, uh, in 2000. 2000. It won the President's Award for the Environment for, in 2000. Awesome. All right. Uh, the vehicle goes zero to 60 in six seconds and tops out at 130 miles an hour. Six seconds? Six seconds. Wow. This will outrun a Corvette. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy. Okay, it's got a bus engine and it. it's got a 104 horse electric motor. Um, and this was technology that was existent back in uh, 2000. Right now, the fuel cells in here are twice the power and they're the size of a lunchbox. Want to get a look at this? Yeah, yeah, I got it. But this is enough to power seven homes. Really? Yeah, I powered this house here for over, almost a year just off of the car. There's a plug in here. I can pull this out and I plug it into the inverters in the house. Wow. Now I noticed it's got a little solar power. <clears throat> yeah, it the keeps the, it keeps the, um, the the service battery charged. You know, run the 12 okay. volt for the lights and the right. and the small, the low voltages. So you can basically charge up at home <laughs> with your hydrogen as much as you need for your car. Go yeah. out, come back. Yeah, you had a power failure. You can plug your your uh, huh. car into your house. Wow. Now, once these tanks are filled up, or the fuel cells are filled up... The fuel cells run on hydrogen, it's in the back. This okay. car has a range of 472 miles. 472 miles. That's about a full tank of gas. That's more than a full tank That's of gas. more than a full uh, tank We have a hybrid we're running, and this is a about 400. And this is a full-size car. Yeah. Now, if you have a hydrogen vehicle, it gets the equivalent of about 75 miles per gallon for an SUV. Okay. Because the fuel cell is about 55%, and internal combustion engine is about 15%. The hybrid may be 20. Yeah. The other thing that's interesting about this car is that it's called an AIV. An AIV is an aluminum intensive vehicle. There were 20 of these cars built by Ford Motor Company and Alcoa Aluminum at a cost of $33 million. Um, they wanted to test the crash worthiness of aluminum vehicles, the safety. So they crash tested seven, 17 of these cars. And they crash tested safer than the Mercedes 300D safest car in the world. Really? And yeah, this car weighs 70 percent less than, yeah. than the average car because it's built out of aluminum. Just to give you an idea, I grab that. That's carbon aluminum. These are the rotors that are on this yeah. car. The whole car is aluminum. So, what? What was the reason? Everything. Everything not is using it. Well, back to what I told you yeah. before. It's basically you want to build a car that will never rust. You know, they, people buy cars every two or three years in Rochester. Well, because the car rots out there. It has to just get past the warranty. Insane. And they blame it on the salt in the roads. This one would never rust. This is this is forever. Yeah. Now it's like just cost to produce. Believe it or not, they can produce it for not much more than a, uh, than a regular car. But it's back to selling more cars. If you build something too good, you put yourself out of business. Make your money it's in a parts. shame. They make, yeah. their, they make their money in parts and service. If you have a vehicle that has no service, building the, the best mousetrap is not always the, the solution to being successful. It's building one that you have to keep buying. It's like curing a disease. The drug companies learn when they cured polio, there was no more repeat business. They haven't cured another disease since. You know, we come into this world with nothing. We live, we live a block of time, no matter how short or long that may be. What we do in that block of time defines our existence on this planet forever. And the people that we touch every day, like I'm touching you guys, you know, and the things and actions that we do, and how we live our lives. All right, people are all consumed with the wrong things in life. Money is important. Money's not important. To me. Legacy is important. To me. You know, how, what kind of thing am I going to? What, what kind of condition am I going to leave this planet in for the next generation? Am I going to be able to cure disease and pestilence? Well. I can't do it all, but I decided I'm going to leave the gift of renewable energy to the next generation. It's amazing. Unfortunately, it's up to you guys. Well, we're trying we to can, we can, we can show the way, and I can turn over the technology, and it's it's really up to it's you. It's your generation that really is in control of which direction we take. The baby boomers are on their way out. We're done. We're handing over the torch. And I, you know, I have a good feeling about it. I think a lot of us... People have to think of out of the are, box. Yeah. You know, I told you some pretty radical ideas today. You did. You know, and if you and can't I, dream I it, you can't it. build it. But it's going to make society a better place. But it can't be based on greed anymore. What does money mean if you've destroyed the whole planet around you, if there's no place to live?